Those watching on the screen, whoever watching us from, Bale watching us from Africa, Europe, watching us from America, Australia, whoever watching us from, or they're watching us right from within Africa, Zambia, Malawi, Botswana, Congo, Swaziland, Namibia, Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Equatorial Guinea, wherever watching us from, Ethiopia, anyway, I'd like to welcome you once again for this wonderful service. In this service, we deal with issues of life. We have so many Christians who are called Christians, but that's not enough. We have Christians who come to Jesus, but that's not enough. It's not enough to take out the Egyptians, I mean the Israelites, from Egypt and put them in the wilderness. That's not enough. But what is enough is to deliver them out of Egypt and put them at a place of milk and honey. It's not enough for you just to receive Jesus Christ. It is the first primary goal of Jesus and God for you, after you receive Jesus, to be in a place of milk and honey. This is what the Bible says, above all, I wish that you prosper. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? The Bible says, above all, I wish that you prosper and that you may have good health. So as your soul prospers, just as your soul prospers, your spirit, your spiritual life, as it is prospering, God's wish and need is that you also must prosper. Oh, the way you are receiving suspicious. Now, the Bible says, the Bible says, God's wish is that you may prosper. You know, it's so amazing to see how prophets talk of prosperity again and again and how some people get intimidated and they hate prophets talking about prosperity. Anyway, the Bible says, believe in prophets and you shall prosper. So in other words, prophets, mainly they are there for your prosperity. So we're going to talk of prosperity. If it bores you, it's easy. Go and open your own church and preach poverty. Oh, am I coming with somebody here? Now, so when we speak as Christians, when you receive Jesus, I'm not talking to you just like um, a prophet. I'm talking to you as a prophet who is very, very, very rich. Uh, I know, I know if you are jealous, say you are a witch. Listen to this. There is no any way. Listen to this. I, as a Christian, <laughs> Jesus, oh, you're not healing me. Are you healing me or something? I, I've even, I don't even remember the day I came and they said, okay, let's, oh, I want to do offering. I've even forgotten the day I did the offering myself here. Because, oh, you know, look at this one. Look at this one. Because, listen to me, the the gospel, the gospel of Jesus must go far. But how is it going to go far without resources? We need you to become rich. So that you can go and reach out to the poor. You can move out and help the people who are suffering. Listen, everybody is busy sponsoring something in the world. Look at how football is sponsored and how native is sponsored, boxing and all these things. But there's nobody who is sponsoring the kingdom of God. And nobody says anything uh, after all. Nobody says, why are the, the government taking so much money, putting the football? Why? Nobody says anything. But if you do that, the world is going to say, why are you giving money to the church? Why? And the answer is simple, because I'm capable of doing it. So tonight, we are not dealing with the people who just want to enrich themselves. But we are dealing with people who want God to prosper them so that they can become the hand of God and meet the needs of people who are suffering and become a solution. Oh, am I communicating?
connected to somebody. Are you hearing me? So tonight, I'm, I'm, I'll be teaching you something, and, um, and I'm going to pray for you for something to happen. And I want to tell you something. We are having so many testimonies how God is opening people's lives. And for starters, this is a diplomatic service which comes every Monday. This service is for people, is for diplomats, you know, people who have chosen to represent God on earth. The Bible says, don't you know? That you are the ambassadors of Christ. Yeah. Oh, an ambassador is a diplomat. Am I coming to somebody here? Yeah. An ambassador is a diplomat. You cannot represent God in poverty. What picture are you giving to the world? This is why your company must move. This is why your business must open. This is why your salary must increase. This is why you must get a job. This is why you must become worthy. I feel like somebody's hearing what I'm trying to say right here. And somebody watching on the screen is receiving a miracle right now on television. Some are watching on the phone, on gadgets, where they're watching from. God is touching you right there. Oh, put your hands for Jesus. Will you care, somebody? Say power. Hallelujah. I refuse to be poor. Just try, try God tonight. Let him intervene into a situation and let's see if you're going to remain poor. The gospel being preached in poverty. It does not, listen to me. I told the story one time I was in the plane and I was in the first class. So I was sitting with this senator from U.S. next to me and uh, she was a lady. So she asked me a question. She said, ah, I think she was surprised to see a, a young man is in the first, you know, first class for all information. It's uh, the salary for you for for the whole year. <laughs> you. So this lady was asking me a question. She was like, "Um, what's your name?" And and I told her. I said, "My name is Shepherd." She said, "Ah, you look religious." I said, what an insight this lady she's talking about. I'm not religious. Oh, I'm supernatural. Come on. Oh, glory. Oh, religious is that kind of tradition where you go in the church and oh, hallelujah. I don't do that. I'm not a traditional guy. Oh. You're not even hearing this. <laughs> so I said, uh, I, I am not. She said, oh. So I said, no, I'm not a religious woman. She said, are you Pentecost? I said, neither. I said, I'm not Pentecostal. You know, Pentecostal, and I began to tell her. She said, well, so who are you? I said, I I'm of the upper room. Oh, the Bible says on the day of Pentecost, not Pentecostals, it was on the day of, it was on a holiday day, just like a Mandela day, where the disciples received the Holy Ghost. So when they received the Holy Ghost, they never became the holiday day name. No. The Pentecost until today is celebrated in, in Israel, where all people go and, and they, they celebrate the harvest. So when they have their harvest, they've got a day where they go and celebrate, and there's nothing to do with the God. Others drink, others do whatever they want to do. It has nothing to do with the God. It's a tradition. It's what they do. And the disciples, they were hiding in the upper room. You didn't hear me. They were hiding in the upper room. The Pentecostals were celebrating elsewhere. It is not the Pentecostals who received the Holy Ghost. It was those in the upper room. Oh, you're not even hearing me at all. So she said, um, she said, uh, what do you do? I said, a lot. 
Ah, I said, we do a lot. Number one, we manufacture oxygen. I am the director in that company. <laughs> and uh, our CEO is Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Power. Yeah. Oh, are you not even hearing me? Yeah. So she was, you know, when she heard about, you know, the things of God, and she was becoming, you know, down, down, down. And I said, for all information, I also do, you know, mining, I'm into this. And I began to talk about, you know, dollar language. You know dollar language? <laughs> and she was so interested. And she was, we began to talk business. And um, she was so interested. And I said, the one you're talking to has got his own jets. You know? She said, huh? <laughs> so she was, uh, now to, she was now able to listen now. The senator of America now began to listen because she has heard that this prophet is not a poor prophet. Now she was listening. Everything was telling her, oh, yes, oh, amen, hallelujah. I'm like, ah, you are a liar, you. <laughs> so when people hear, you know, we're living in the world where you, you, you can't go to a rich man and tell the person about Jesus, and he look at you like this, and he sees how you're looking. People, they think the disciples were poor. That's a wrong, 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 wrong mentality. You read the book of Acts chapter 5. It says they became rich to a level whereby they were lacking in nothing. They could stand before Herod and tell him because they had money. And he could listen to them. They were called. They were called by, by um, uh, these elders. They said, let it listen to us. And the Bible says... And they were marveled because Peter was unlearned. But they marveled by the knowledge. He was facing them. They, well, they have packed their bentles out. I mean, they are donkeys outside. Ah, <laughs> oh, you're not even here. <laughs> and, you know, in those days, to have a donkey, I, I heard someone was like, oh, you know, Jesus Christ was so humble. He was using a donkey. Uh, why do you use expensive cars? I said, that's a 4,000 years mentality. 4,000 years ago mentality. Jesus, in his days, if he was using a donkey, let me tell you, there were so many who didn't have a donkey. For him to use a donkey, a donkey in those days was like our today's Mercedes-Benz. Do you think if, if, if these cars were there in those days, do you think Jesus could be using a donkey? That's, 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 that's a false mentality. Jesus was not a poor God. And he is not poor. He, he is not poor. He owns all the universe. And the demons in it. And the oil in it. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? And you are a child of God. It is amazing to see how a child of a king can be, can be uh, uh, struggling to get a portion of land, yet the father is a king. A child of a president can be struggling to get a job, yet the father is a president. What more with you? Your God is the president of the whole universe. So tonight, I will teach you something that is going to teach, it is going to help you to find out how as a child of God, you can connect yourself to a level where you can become successful in everything that you do. Yeah. Raise up your right hand. Say, Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, tonight, tonight speak, to me. speak to me. Speak to me. In the name of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ. Help, me help me tonight. Take me from nobody, me from nobody. to somebody. From nowhere to somewhere. All my hope is in you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Don't forget, it's not about your CV, your curriculum vita. It's about your CV, Christ value.
Hallelujah. Take your Bibles quickly. First Peter. Chapter 3. Are you there? Hallelujah. Verse 4. The Bible says, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. The eyes of the Lord. Say the eyes of the Lord. The eyes of the Lord. Say it again. Say it again. Say they, they are upon the righteous. The Bible says the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous. And his ears. I want to say something to you. Tonight I'm continuing the topic genetics and heredity. All right. Now, I want you to listen to this. I'll be talking, as I said, I'll be talking about genetics and heredity. And I remember last week, I much spoke of genetics. And I went uh, a little bit into science. And um, just for those who are not here and those who didn't listen, I'm going to speak just in a, in a minute summarize what I spoke last week on genetics. And we went into science. And the word genetics comes from the word genes. And I told you that every person has got DNA. Deoxynucleic acid. This is the acid in every human being. And the DNA was found by a Christian. It's the person who discovered DNA, which now the whole world is using. And this person went to Clinton, Bill Clinton, and said to the president of America, he said, we have found out the way of God. And he began to explain that way. And he, he found DNA as he was praying. These are the things, if you find on the internet, you're going to find, as I'm telling you now. The one who discovered DNA was a Christian who was praying, and he got it as a revelation. And he went to the president and told him, and he said, this DNA, it is the way of God. Oh, you are here? Are you here or you're not here? So DNA, it is, if your father has given birth to you, no matter what, you carry the DNA of your father. It is a substance, and I told you, it is a double-stranded structure that carries genes which are passed from one parent to a child of the same copy. That's the meaning of DNA. So if, you're, if you give birth to a child, all your children, they have got your DNA. Whether you like it or not, they carry your DNA. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. And I read a scripture for you which says, we are the seed of Abraham. And the word the seed in science, it is what we call the genotype, which carries the gene. So the seed has got the influence of giving birth to another kind of itself, of the same copy, by the DNA. So you are a child, you may not look the same face with your father, but you have got a certain substance in your body, which is called DNA. And that substance is the exact substance which your biological father has and your mother. This is why if you are born again, if you receive Jesus... You receive the DNA of Jesus. As he is, so are we. Meaning to say, if Jesus cannot go through what you're going through, you are not supposed to go through what you're going through. 
But if you are going through what you're going through, yet Jesus can't go through it. It may mean sometimes you may have the DNA of Jesus, but there may be a problem somewhere. And I told you where a problem can be. I said the DNA, the process of DNA, the study of it is called central dogma of molecular genetics in science. Oh, you're looking at me now. <laughs> central dogma of molecular genetics. And I told you there are three processes which takes place on the DNA to be processed to finish into the final product. And I told you of the first process, which is called translation. Translation. In this process, there is a lubrication of a DNA of, into another copy of the same kind. Now, after translation, we have another process, which is called transcription. Or oh, trans, transcription which is removing of all unwanted things in the DNA to produce the DNA without problems. And I told you, in this process, that's where the DNA is processed by MNRA, which is a messenger nucleic acid which takes away all unwanted things in a DNA. Oh, you're not even hearing. <laughs> and the things which are taken out are called introns. And the remaining things are called exons. So all the introns are taken out. So if they are not taken out, this is whereby a parent gives birth to a child who has got problems. A deformed child, yet the father is not a deformed man. Or a child may be born completely a different copy. Why? Because the introns were not taken out. I will show you the introns when I'm talking about the heredity. So introns, they are taken out on that. So when the introns are taken out, the child will be exact copy. But if they're not taken out, even the child may actually be born lame. Why the parent is not like that. This is why Christians... They are called Christians. They have the DNA of Jesus, but there are things that are not moving. Why? Because there may be introns in their life which are not taken out. The Bible says, purge yourself. Oh, am I talking to somebody here? So there's a need of purging whereby we must remove the introns by a process called MNRA. Oh, you're not even hearing me. So that only the, the, the good things must remain inside of you. That's why the Bible says, let your good works shine before men. That they may give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So only the good thing must remain. We must take out the introns. So after that, we'll go into another process which is God. You have even forgotten now. <laughs> so we have translation and we have transcription. From transcription... We have, you have even forgotten. Huh? I think this side I've forgotten. Tell them this side. Huh? Jesus. <laughs> we are having answers here. <laughs> you, you will skip school, I think you. <laughs> I can see people who jumped from the window this side. <laughs> you, you have forgotten already? No. What's number one? Transcription. And then? That side, I think they're not even remembering anything. You are remembering, right? Yes. You are remembering, right? Yes. So, lubrication is where they, there is a duplication of the same DNA. Then we have whereby the transcription, where unwanted things are taken out. Then we have a process, translation, 
whereby they, it is process, the DNA is processed to a final product, the protein. And they were of the DNA. You were there? You were there? Now, let me show you something. And I told you, I gave you an example of how a DNA can be rearranged. You remember? You remember, right? A DNA can be what? Scientifically, it's possible. It's whereby we can get the DNA and put it on a computer. I'm going to show you just now. Let me show you something. So last week, basically, we are talking about how you can be a different copy. You're wandering, you're poor, yet God is not poor. And the Bible says we are the seed of Abraham, yet Abraham was not a poor person. He was rich. And if you are the seed, you are supposed to replicate the same copy. So it is possible for you to become poor, yet you're, 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 you're a descendant of Abraham because there are some things in your life which are not removed. So today, we are talking about the heredity. Say heredity. heredity. Now, when we talk of heredity here, first of all, I'd like to let you know heredity is the same word where we come out with the word inheritance. Inheritance is not for people who are strangers. Inheritance is for your children. Even the Bible says so. And I read a scripture for you last week. Inheritance is not, nobody can inherit your things unless it's your child. But there's no inheritance without you having the DNA, having, being the same copy of the parent. All right, now, let's stop there for a moment. And let's go to Zechariah chapter 4 from verse 1. I want to show you something. Zechariah 4, from verse 1. Something very important. And the angel who talked with me came again and awakened me like a man who is waking out of his sleep. Verse 2. Verse 2. And he said to me, what do you see? I said, I see, and behold, a lamp stand. All right. Now, let's, 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 let's see. A lamp stand... All right, a lampstand, all of God with, with its bowl for oil, on the top of it, and a seven lampstand on it, and there are seven pups to each of the seven lampstands which are upon the top of it. Now, I, I want you to look at this. There's a lamp stand here, and here we have got seven. Do you see that? Do you see that? And these are lamps. And these are pipes, and this is the lamp stand. Now, I want to show you something. Don't worry about the drawing. I'm the best <laughs> in the whole world. You see, jealousy. <laughs> These ones, I know them. They're too jealousy. All right, let's go to verse 3. And there are two olive trees by it. Two what? All right. There are two olive trees by it. So we have tree A and we have tree B. It is in your Bible, right? And there are two olive trees by it, one upon the right side and of the bow and the other upon the left side, which I've done here. Feeding it continually with oil. So these trees here, there is a secret do you hear me? 
whereby they are feeding this bowel with oil. Are you still there? Now, verse 4. Verse 4. The Bible says, So I asked the angel who talked with me, What are these, my Lord? Verse 5. Then the angel who talked with me asked me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. Verse 6. Then he, told, then he said to me, This addition of the board to the candlestick caused it to yield a ceaseless supply. So this is bringing a ceaseless supply of oil from the olive tree. So this is the olive tree, which is used for the anointing oil. Lion of Judah, whatever oil you call it, comes from the olive trees. Now, it says, causing to you a ceaseless supply of oil from the olive trees is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. So what is taking place here? What is taking place here? It says it is the word of God to Zerubbabel. I've put a space here for a reason. I'll show you just now. Now, it is the word of God to who? It is the word of God to who? Saying what? Not by might, which is energy. Not by might, nor by power, which also is the energy. But by my spirit, of whom the aura is a symbol, says the Lord of hosts. Now, is somebody hearing what, I'm, what is taking place here? Now, let me tell you the whole process what is taking place here. This, which you are seeing here, it is a believer, the candlestick, you. This, which you are seeing here, it is the Holy Spirit which is in the sevenfold, which are the seven spirits of God. The seven spirits of God are the spirit of the fear of the Lord, the spirit of... So if you, you fear God, these are the seven things which a Christian has. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of fear of the Lord, the spirit of, of might, the soul. All right? So, in other words, let's just say the Holy Spirit. Are, are you there? So this is you. This is the Holy Spirit, which is on top of, which the Bible says, you shall receive power when the Spirit comes on you. So, which is on top of you. But you cannot have these ones burning without these two olive trees. This olive tree is Jesus. How do we know? Jesus says, I must go to my Father so that I can send another comforter, the Holy Spirit tree B. Oh, you're not even hearing now. I think you're lost somewhere, but we, let's go back. Now, we have got here, you, here. Who is not listening? Who, who is not listening? We can get you back to... All right. Now, we have got this, which is you. And this, the Holy Spirit on you, the candlesticks on you. And the two trees which were mentioned here was a prophecy which was being prophesied. What's going to happen? To who? To this one. How do we know it? The Bible says these are words to Zerubbabel. Now, this is Zerubbabel. The word Zeru means a foreigner. And the word Babel is a short phrase of the word Babylon. The word Babylon means a land of confusion. 
In other words, Zerubbabel means a foreigner in the land of confusion. Now, the Bible says, whatever is happening here, it is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. What is going to happen to him? That he will succeed, not by power, which is to the left, nor by right, which is here, but he will succeed by the Spirit of the Lord, which is Jesus and the Holy Ghost, which supplies continuously to this person, which is you. So there is no supply without demand. Oh. So for the Holy Ghost to supply in you, for the Holy Spirit to supply in you, for Jesus to supply in you, there must be a demand. So the Bible says this one will succeed. You will succeed. You are as you are listening to me there, you shall succeed not by degrees, not by diplomas, not by your business. You shall succeed by the Spirit of the Lord. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I communicating to somebody here? <laughs> oh, you are home or you are here. So this, the word is Zerubbabel here. It means a foreigner in the land of confusion. To everybody who received Jesus Christ as the Lord and the personal Savior, to that person he became a foreigner in this world. The Bible says we are not citizens of this earth. We are foreigners in this earth. Our citizenship is in heaven. In other words, you are a Zerubbabel. I am a Zerubbabel. I am a foreigner in this land of confusion. Now, this word is to me. The Bible says I will succeed not by my, my, my intelligence, not by how wise I am, but by the Spirit of the Lord. You're going to get a job by the Spirit of the Lord. You're going to finish your school by the Spirit of the Lord. You're going to get married, not by how beautiful you are, not by how ugly you are. You're going to do it by the Spirit. So this process here can be explained scientifically. Now, I have explained to you in a biblical way. Now, let me tell you the same process scientifically. What happens here is, this person shall become a successful person. Now, what you begin to see is not a failure, but a successful person. But how did he become a successful person? It means the DNA of the Holy Ghost and the DNA of Jesus came on this person by a scientific method, which is called cloning. In science. Oh, you're not even hearing. You're not even hearing. Let me show you. Let me show you. Is somebody here or home? Say power. power. Are you hearing me or you're home? Yeah. What just happened there, scientifically, they call it cloning. Cloning, it, is, it takes place in what they call Hmm. M G O stroke M E O. This is in science, which means modification, genetics, organisms. <laughs> Now, let, let, let's go to science. The, the very same thing I showed you there is called what? It is a process of modification to something which is modified. So MGO is way we bring in, all right, for example, we'll talk about the modification. All of you know, this is a modified genetics Organism. Now, I want to show you something. When we say modified, for example, in South Africa, most of the things we eat are modified. If you eat a fruit, an orange, it's not the same fruit you can eat in the village. 
because the fruit has been what? Modified. Just like Zerubbabel. He was not a foreigner in the land of confusion. But because of with this tree, and this tree, which have supplied, has changed, has become a foreigner in the land. I, I think you're home or something just happened right now. Are you here or you're home? You're following? Hello? Hello? So, I think now you, all you know now, the meaning of modified. Something which is modified, it is a thing, for example, um, let me use this formula. There's a formula in science. It's a phenotype. It's a phenotype. Oh, yo. <laughs> we have what you call phenotype. A phenotype, it is you. A phenotype, it is a final copy. You, like me. I'm a, a phenotype. But for this phenotype to be there, there is what you call phenotype is equal to genotype. Genotype plus environment. Or genetic makeup. <laughs> oh, you are here? <laughs> you are here or you're home? <laughs> now, so you're here, right? So a phenotype. This is the final copy. What happens for the phenotype to be there? It is genotype plus what? Environment. For example, let's, let's solve it. Let's solve it. There is a short person here. Very short. Right? Very short person here. And there is a tall person here, very tall. There may be effects of this. The genotype may be tall which the DNA may be tall. The genes may be tall. Remember, the genotype is the same word we, which we come up with, with genes. And the genes, the same word we come with what? Generations. Don't forget, right? Now, so this person may be tall. The genotype may be tall. But the person may be short because of the environment. Or the genotype may be short. You're in your family, you're all short, 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 short. But because of environment, you know, Shisanyama and all these things. <laughs> because of a good environment, the person may become what? Tall. So we have a phenotype here which is tall because of what? Or because of what? The genes. Someone may be wondering why he's gymming every day and he can't lose weight. Do you know why? Because of environment. Ah, you're not even hearing this. In the morning, you're eating this after that, you know? You may try even to minimize eating things, but you're still fat because the environment. 